Hey, we're at the offices of Dr. David Klein, and we got a little bit of an echo, but don't let that bother you. The information is well worth it. And we're here in what is beginning to be another new studio where we can uh, work out of here. We work out of the RP Funding Studios. We work out of studios in Lake County. And now we're going to be also working out of the Stages of Life Studios. Seems like everywhere I go, people are building studios, but that's okay. Dr. David Klein, Stages of Life. If you just go on the web and we'll give you the address after a while, you'll get directions to get here. You could put it in your Garmin, put it in your uh, smartphone, and you'll be here in about 45 minutes from the Tri-County area. And especially those of you that are around Mount Dora, Eustis, Leesburg, right in there, the new Sullivan Ranch, a lot of you coming down. Okay, insulin resistance. We're getting an awful lot of interest in that. And, of course, when you say insulin, people think diabetes. And, oh, and well, they should. Okay, insulin resistance syndrome is sometimes known as prediabetes. So when and how do you want to catch any particular disease, any particular disaster is best prevented before it occurs, or at the very least, it's best mitigated before it, everything falls apart? Well, that's true in medicine. It's true in just about anything that you do. Well, in this case, when somebody goes to the doctor's office and they're peeing uh, sugar, okay, they're getting up in the middle of the night uh, to go to the bathroom, they're doing all this crazy stuff, and then they get their blood drawn and the doctor comes in, Mrs. Jones, I'm sorry to tell you, but you have diabetes. Really what he's saying, or should be saying, is that for the past 10 years you've had diabetes, but your blood sugar didn't have a chance to go up because the, the body was adapting to it, okay? Insulin levels actually go up in diabetes. They don't go down. They go up. The body becomes resistant to the insulin. The blood sugars remain the same until something breaks. Then the insulin stays high, the blood sugar goes up, and then the doctor tells you that you have insulin issues. When in fact they should be saying, hey, gee, I dropped the ball. I missed this one 10, 15, 20 years ago when we could have prevented you gaining that 80 or 90 pounds. Now, why does this happen? Well, there are a number of different things that have to occur in order for the body to use insulin. And just like so many other organ systems, the pancreas is lazy, the body tends to conserve energy, so the lowest level of insulin that you can secrete to maintain normal blood sugar is what you want. What's a normal blood sugar? Healthy is 80 to 85. Abnormal, okay, you're diabetic when it's over 110 or 120. Would you rather have a normal blood sugar at 80 to 85 or 110? Well, it goes something like this. For every milligram percent that your blood sugar goes up over 85, your life expectancy shortens. Not good. Not good. Okay. So, you know, you, you, you need to know where you're at. You want a low blood sugar. This is what you want to have. You also want to have a low insulin level, which means that the body is using the insulin appropriately. Well, there are a number of reasons number of places where this can break down. The insulin receptor is the most common. It can happen on the outside of the cell. Okay, you can have insulin uh, antibodies. This happens. It doesn't happen a lot, but it can happen. You can have a congenital abnormality of the insulin receptor, which is extraordinarily complicated. It looks a lot like the inner workings of your computer. You know, it's, it's, it's inscrutable in its complexity. But there are several things that will routinely break this receptor, one of which is vanadium deficiency and the other one is chromium deficiency. So you're going to go, well, gee, this should be pretty easy. Let's take some vanadium and let's take some chromium. And the answer is not so fast <laughs> because the difference between an appropriate amount and a toxic amount is narrow. You have to know what you're doing to treat this. This is not something, again, for the zit-faced kid at the hippie store. You have got to walk into this thing knowing more than they do. You've also <laughs> got to be very, very aware that a little is good, getting the right amount is better, but too much can be poison. And vanadium is that way. Chromium is that way. You've got to be very, very careful. There are other things you can do to sensitize the cells to insulin. My first and my favorite is one called metformin, which is a prescription medication. When you lower insulin, you reduce the risk of cancer. Not just this cancer, not that cancer, but every type of cancer that I've run through the National Library of Medicine. It's unbelievable how this works. How it works is very, very neat. Insulin pushes blood sugar into the cell. This is why you're getting fat. This is why you have fat around your waist. When insulin goes up, the waist goes up. You turn into a pear, okay? This is the way of life. This is the way of death. However, okay, Insulin also pushes blood sugar into a cancer cell, and that's Ooh. one way that cancer cells and non-cancer cells differ. Non-cancer cells can use triglycerides and other 
fuels, whereas cancer cells have to use blood sugar. Okay, so if you starve mm. them by decreasing insulin, you kill them. Okay, so you'll actually see cell death in cancer cells using metformin. It can and is being used as a chemotherapy adjunct. So how do you lower wow. insulin? Well, first you need to know what it is. Okay, you gotta measure it. So you'll go to the doctor's office and very, very commonly they'll do blood sugars. Good for them, okay? They'll, they might even check your urine for blood sugar. Okay, if, 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 if sugar is in your urine, it's already too late. Okay, you know, now you got an awful lot of uphill running to do to catch up with this one. It, it, it can be done, but it's tough. But you need to know the insulin level, and this is not the same thing as something called a hemoglobin A1C, which is the latest indicator at all. It tells you how bad you've been over a 90-day period. Okay, oh. it, it's, you know, it's, it's like driving your car down a freeway looking exclusively in the rear view mirror. This is not the way a thoughtful person would drive, nor is it a thoughtful way to practice medicine. You have to see where you're going, and insulin and the insulin glucose ratio is how I prefer to do it because it gives you a very, very tight a hold on what's going on on the cellular level. Mm -hmm. You know, we could discuss, you know, where the stuff works at something called the AMPK pathways. It's really not important unless you're a researcher or if you're real curious, but for the most part, what you're looking to do is to decrease insulin levels. You decrease insulin levels, the weight comes down. How do you like that? Okay, now why, why yeah, this is important, but why, why would you really care? Because insulin, high levels of insulin promote promulgate and make you develop inflammatory conditions like autoimmune disorders. Oh boy. So if you don't take care of one, you get the other. Very, very interesting. Thyroid doesn't work if insulin's too high. Thyroid doesn't work if estrogen's too low. So the, the joke here is that too much, too little, same symptoms. And, uh -huh. and, and you have to look at the whole picture or you see nothing at all. Wow. Okay, and again, we're seeing more and more advertising that this can help you, that can help you, this can help you. And how many people have turned to, well, I don't want to get the sugar from a Coke, so I'll have a Diet Coke. Oh, even, and you've even told better. us the dangers of that. Yeah, it's actually, it, it's, it's been shown to me, it might actually be worse. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the fructose in the Coca-Colas and the other sodas, that inhibits the insulin receptor directly. So it's not just the calorie load. Okay, but it's the, the inhibition of the insulin receptor. But the non-caloric sweeteners actually fool the brain into secreting more insulin. If, it, if something tastes Goodness sweet, gracious. your brain kicks out releasing hormones to kick up insulin. So your best bet is to pull away from all sweeteners. Readjust your taste buds. You do not need salt. Okay, you do not need extra sugar. This is craziness. And if you look around at the population, for the most part, most people do not look healthy. If you want to, uh, uh, let's say, let's reset our vantage point. Pick up a 1970 Life magazine. Okay, that's all you have to do. Look at the pictures. That's what we looked like 45 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now look around. Okay, we, we look like oversized french fries. This is not a good place to be. <laughs> but this is how we did it. We did it to you, ourselves. You think back to 1960s TV. Yeah. Dick Van Dyke. Oh, Andy Taylor. Yeah. That was the average man. That was now the, the way. Now the average man's 240 pounds. Look at Don Knotts. We would think he had AIDS. You <laughs> know what I mean? You know, oh, that skinny guy, he's got to be sick. No, these, were, these people were healthy. You know, they, they ate what we consider to be a very unhealthy diet, and they lived longer than we did. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, you know, if they'd known not to smoke, they'd probably still all be alive. But, you know, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's just the way these things go. I miss Aunt B's cooking. I'm miss telling you right B. now. Yeah. Hey, Robin, could you get us in touch with the stages of life so that we can drive up here or we could order our nutraceuticals online? Absolutely. Online, it's very easy. It's stagesoflife.net. You just click on the vitamins and mineral tab and it'll direct you right to our online store. You can come into the office. We're located in Longwood at 1917 Booth Circle. That's right off of I-4 and 434. Our office hours are Monday through Thursday from 8 to 5 and our phone number is 407-679-3337. All right, very good. Dr. David Klein joins us every day now on the Rob Newton Resource Hour. We're getting an awful lot of people talking about him. They say, well, why doesn't he have an office right here in the villages? He's close. Come to Orlando. Have a little lunch, you know. Do some shopping. Come up here. Make a day trip out of it. I guarantee you're going to love it. And the thing I love about the Nutra Nutraceutical store is it's very consumer friendly. And you actually have people here helping you in the store that know what everything is. 
They weren't working in the hardware department last week because there is no hardware department here. Anyway, thank you, Dr. Klein.